Hey y'all, it's Jess. I got a question earlier this week from a friend saying, how do you manage emotionally when people post videos of kids having meltdowns for autism awareness? One showed up on my feed and watching it was almost physically painful to me. I hated it so much. I don't ex exactly know what my emotions are right now other than very negative and upset. How do you manage when you see stuff like that? So I have not really seen too many of these like just appearing on Instagram or on my feed or anything. So I watched a few that were posted on YouTube that had a lot of views, uh, sadly. And the things that I noticed were mainly these key phrases. Um, this is what we deal with or we want to show the good and bad side of autism. And I disagree with those statements as accurate reasons to be posting videos like this. Um, some other things that they would talk about is that they are unpredictable, which is wrong, um, or that this happens because she is severely autistic, quote unquote. So my main thesis for this is that these parents fail to recognize what an autistic meltdown is or they are prioritizing other things above their child's needs. So instead of like realizing that their child is in distress, they are going and doing like shopping and stuff in the store anyway because that's more important than their child being upset. Uh, they're, they're treating it like it's a tantrum because this kid just doesn't want to do something and they're grumpy, which is not what a meltdown is. There's behavior that is exhibited by these children that is just treated as a behavior that needs to be corrected and it is exploited instead of determined by the child's emotions and thoughts and seeing what those emotions and thoughts are. So basically these people are handling their children's meltdowns incorrectly. Um, they're not avoiding triggers and like looking out for these things that trigger emotions like big crowds, flashing lights, um, whatever it is that they're doing that is causing their child to have a meltdown. They have not tried to find different ways of doing it that make their child more comfortable. Um, and also they're using this time instead of calming their child and showing them that they are safe and that they are um, protected. They're using this time to film their child, which is not great. Um, you, if this is if this is like time that you should be spending calming your child down, explaining to them as well as you can what needs to be done. If this is something that you absolutely have to do, if they're at the doctor's or something, they're having a meltdown because they need to get vaccinations or anything like that, or they're using their time to film their child exhibiting these behaviors instead of spending that time looking for, okay, what is it that I can change right now so that my child is not in distress? So obviously it's no, it's no debate anymore. This is the wrong thing to be doing. It's, it's like, we're not spending any more time arguing this, posting these videos as child abuse and very immature uh, way for an adult to deal with being a parent. So with that understanding, out of the way, here's what you can do. Don't watch the videos. If it, it, it might make you emotional, it might make you upset, um, it could cause like triggers in you that might cause you to melt down or shut down, and that's not helpful to anyone. Uh, and also, less views the better. If you, these videos keep getting views, and more and more views, people are going to see it as a popular thing to do. It kind of already is. Um, so just deny them views. Um, you can report or block these accounts as well. You can tag it as child abuse or bullying or um, quite a, there's quite a few other things that you could probably put in and explain in detail um, to these people who will go through the reports and um, just just block them because like I said, it's not a debate anymore of is this ethical or not. It's not. And so anyone trying to argue that with you is just a waste of your time. <laughs> Um, what I am going to do personally, uh, it might, you might not be comfortable doing it, but, uh, at some point if I have a meltdown over something, I'm going to film that and then I'm going to afterwards explain why I had a meltdown, what I was feeling, why I was doing the things that I was doing and how I can prevent that in the future. 
because that is my own personal choice of what I can do to show if they're trying to do this in the name of autism awareness, then that's okay if it's my choice to do that. I don't have a meltdown the same way a child would have a meltdown. So if it, all that's out there is children's meltdowns, then you don't know what an adult looks like when they are having a meltdown. And for me, for, for everyone, it looks completely different. And so the parents are going to be with the children in public most of the time when these children are having meltdowns. We, as adults, are not going to be accompanied by people uh, or our parents all the time in public. And so it's really more beneficial for people, other people to know what an adult having a meltdown looks like so that they can do something to help instead of um, just stigmatizing us and calling the police on us or anything like that because there will be no one there to explain what is going on to them with us. So, and the last thing that you could do is just spreading awareness on why we have meltdowns and education on how to avoid them. Meltdowns are not something that is that should be innately experienced by autistics because we are autistic. It is because of other stresses, other triggers, and other environmental factors that stress us out. It's not, it's not just an autistic thing. This is a normal human reaction to distress, to not be able to handle things because so much is being piled on top of us. And so the one, once that is understood and accepted more, then we'll just have a more forgiving environment around us because everyone gets stressed out and no one deserves to be attacked for being upset. So I hope that some of those suggestions help you. Uh, if you have any questions or anything that you want me to talk about in my next video, then leave a comment or talk to me on Instagram. It's nice to see you guys. I hope you have a good week. Bye.